Hello everybody, video here for you today. These are the new cap recaps of the Curse of Oak Island Season 2, Episodes 5, 6, and 7, aired in December of 2014. If you missed my recaps of uh, previous episodes, there's a link in the upper right. Let's get into it. Previously on the Curse of Oak Island, people have been looking for an incredible treasure for 228 years. The team drills an additional 18 inches in the previous hole, 142 feet deep, seeking more evidence of the chapel vault. They bring up another core of concrete, clay, and vertical timbers, cementing their belief that they are drilling down the side of the vault. They will drill another hole to try to find the middle of the vault. Daniel Ronstam arrives on the island to tell of his theories concerning the 90-foot stone. He thinks that it is a double cipher having two translations. A previous researcher used the Spanish alphabet to decode the second translation and was thought to be on the wrong track because it didn't work out correctly. Daniel used the English alphabet instead with the same methodology, which gives the translation at 80 feet, guide corn, long narrow C inlet, drain F. The F standing for Sir Francis Bacon, known for his ties to the Rosicrucians and through them the Knights Templar. Daniel says the message means to put corn in several locations underground that will expand and block the flow of water providing access to the treasure. After a few months, maggots eat away the corn and the tunnels flood again. The 90-foot stone has been missing since 1919, and although there were illustrations done from memory, printed in books, the Laginas want to be sure that the markings on it actually exist in that form. Charles Barkhouse uses his Freemason connections to get the assistance of the Grand Master of the Halifax Grand Masonic Lodge, but they don't find anything definitive in the text provided. Alex later tells of a researcher that says proof and clues to the Knights Templar involvement on Oak Island can be found in southern France. Marty approves the show's first European field trip. Back in the war room, they cleaned the coin Gary found in what he thinks would be the camp area for those that constructed the money pit. You can now see distinct lines on the coin. Diver Tony Sampson says it could be a Templar cross, then reveals that he is also a Mason. The Templars were the first bank in recorded history. This team starts using GPS to try to more accurately locate the mercy point of the Nolan's Cross Tree of Life. Tony Sampson suits up for the swamp again and stands on another rock surface, similar to the one he found the previous year in a different location. In episode 6, called Seven Must Die, D-Y-E, the team puts die into Borhol 10X to see if they get the same results of previous die tests by Frederick Blair in 1898 and by Dan and Dave Blankenship in 1988 that showed die not only in Smith's Cove, but also on the southern coast on either side of the swamp, as well as the northern coast just north of Fred Nolan's house. Dan says he thinks there are multiple flood systems on the island. The dye test fails when dye does not appear in the water. Meanwhile, Marty and Alex Lina visit Montsegur, France, to hopefully find proof that the Knights Templar are connected to Oak Island. I verified with Google Maps aligned north that there is indeed a straight line from Oak Island to Montsegur. Interesting. The researcher with them says that the Cathor people were custodians of the Holy Grail and the Ark of the Covenant and were persecuted by the Catholic Church. The story is that before surrendering, they were able to send their treasures down this mountain on a pulley system to the Knights Templar, who took the items to hide on Oak Island where they would be safe. They also visit a church that has a statue of John the Baptist baptizing Jesus that features corn native to North America and supposedly not known of in Europe until the 15th century and definitely not in the time of Jesus. The field trip will continue in Scotland where the Templars supposedly took the treasure en route to fleeing Europe for Oak Island. Rick will join them. 
In episode 7, the team begins to drain the swamp like last year, except this time with more powerful pumps that will run longer in an effort to defeat the natural springs that feed the swamp. Meanwhile, Jack Begley and Dan Blankenship investigate the bald spot, an area where trees inexplicably do not grow. Dan uses dousing or divining to search for possible tunnels underground that they can excavate to reach. This is the same method he used in 1969 to find the spot to dig borehole 10X, which indeed did have a chamber 235 feet down. He finds a spot in which it seems to reveal two tunnels crossing. The excavator reaches its maximum depth of 12 feet with no evidence of a tunnel. They try another spot, but again, no evidence in the 12 foot range. Craig Tester says they will continue to investigate the bald spot, possibly with ground penetrating radar. Rick joins his brother and nephew in Scotland, where they continue their fact finding trip to Europe. They visit Roslyn Chapel, designed by Sir William Sinclair and built by Freemasons in approximately 1456. Legend has it that Sinclair's grandfather Henry traveled to North America in 1398, nearly a century before Columbus supposedly discovered it. The Nova Scotian Indian indigenous people, excuse me, Mi'kmaq tradition is that contact was made with Europeans who taught them new ways of fishing and navigating in that same year. It is further said that Henry Sinclair brought back corn from North America and that the chapel and those corn carvings were built 36 years before Columbus's voyage. The narrator reminds us of the theory presented two episodes previous that corn is to be used to block the flow of water in the flood tunnels. One of the researchers says he believes that there is a tunnel to the money pit 996 foot west of it to match the distance between Roslyn Chapel and Roslyn Castle. That point is on the western edge of the swamp, which Marty isn't thrilled about, focus returning to, but is appreciative of any theory that puts an X on the map instead of being vague. While waiting for season 11 premiere of The Curse of Oak Island, Pardon me. Usually in November, I'll continue recapping seasons one through eight, most likely multiple episodes per video. Once again, I'm Coach Steve Money, Ramsey Solutions Certified Financial Coach, and you can schedule a free financial coaching consultation assessment with me at calendly.com slash coach Steve Money. You can email me about coaching or anything else on my YouTube channel at Coach Steve Money at gmail.com. Channel donations can go to paypal.me at Coach Steve Money. You can add me on the gram at Coach Steve Money. And of course, this YouTube channel is youtube.com slash Coach Steve Money. Thank you so much for watching.